Welcome back to part two of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way, featuring our special guests. Now let's dive right back into the conversation and continue exploring their incredible journey. So for those that don't know then, um, you said it before, a statement I'm not too, I want to learn as well. You ha- I think you said high divine or, or that, the, the divi- what does that mean? Okay, so what this means is um, a lot of people can call this something different. So some people call it religion, some people call it spirituality. But the thing is, none of us are denying that it's there. Everyone just has a different way of relating to it, um, whether it be through prayers, whether it be through rituals. But I fully believe that there is a higher power. There is something governing us. There's universal laws at play. There is something here supporting us, our souls. We are spiritual beings in a human body. We all have a soul. No one denies that. And that's very deeply spiritual. It's come in through the spiritual plane. And um, we all have a higher self, which is like our our ourself on the in the spirit world in like on the other side or or above us whatever that looks like and that has the higher knowing that is fully connected to love that doesn't have the limitations of the human psyche because when we come in we our our psyche is split we have an ego like the the ego which is always trying to keep us safe wants to follow the path of least resistance it's probably sabotage like it's the the main cause of why it sabotages certain things and so we're kind of in this complex world um or this dualistic world where we're always up against like that little inner voice or that ego which is the thing that is just like oh you can have you know you don't need to get up or go to the gym today you can have like a rest and like we'll try and take you off path and so when we connect to our higher self we are all connected to infinite intelligence and mm. all of the answers that we seek can come from within and, and I saw an analogy um the other week and this might rub some people the right way but I fully believe it and in back what I believe is Jesus, if we look at Christianity, Jesus was a mystic who learned about the power within and going within and the temple within and connecting into that God consciousness that we all have, we can all tap into. Um, and then a lot of people think that the where you have to start praying or connecting to something outside of yourself and they put their power in someone else or they put their power outside of them or they have to go to a church um, to connect and to worship and to to pray um i believe that the church or the place of worship or spirituality is within the temple within us and connecting in and so being able to sit in stillness and a lot of people that if we look at christianity too and they call on god and they're speaking they pray and then they get these messages and they feel supported it's because they're connecting to that high power yes god infinite intelligence, universe, angels, spirit guides. It Everyone has a different way of labeling it and religion has different constructs. And for me, that's why I really resonated with spirituality. And I mean, I went through, I went to a public school and then I ended up going to a Catholic school and um, I never felt like I truly belonged and I felt like something like was wrong with me. And then also, especially like, um, I didn't grow up in a religious family. Like my parents weren't very religious, but I know a lot of people that grew up in a strong, with a strong religious background can have those, um, can have like those type of beliefs if they feel different, if they feel like they've got their spiritual qualities or they believe in different concepts that they could be afraid to speak up because then it's labeled as that's the devil's work and all of that stuff. And that's actually something that really held me back to from stepping into my power because of all of these constructs and because of all of that. And for me, what made the shift is I made peace with it because you're not going to be able to always control what people say or think about you or believe about you. All you can control is is how you think about yourself and feel about yourself and you show up. And that's something that I, you know, and to be truly candid, like I was like, do I either need to be locked into a, men- a mental institution and like, why do I think so differently? Why am I connecting to this, this higher power? Why do I feel so out of like sorts? And then it was like, um, that was a common theme for me. And then I, but once I connected into 
my power and fully owned it and made peace with this is what I believe. And I'm a woman that always stands up for what I believe in. And I'm not afraid to put myself out there. And I'm not afraid to, um, for the backlash and stuff, because the thing is, and I'm really grateful I've arrived at this place at such a, a young age. Um, but either way, when you live your life, people are going to judge you. You might as well live the life that you want. You might as well follow your heart because really, I believe everyone is connected. The law of oneness, we are all, all connected. We are all ourselves pushed out. Everyone essentially is a mirror, is a projection. Like what is, what is this world? We're on this rock floating in, in space and stuff. So I always kind of come back to whenever I feel like I'm zoned in or emotional about certain things um, from the external world, I always zone back to what is the truth? I'm a spiritual being having a human experience. Um, you know, I'm connected to this, this higher power, but our brains as humans, we try and conceptualize. We don't fully understand or know how to comprehend it. So we try and conceptualize with our language, put things into constructs, put things into boxes, put things into labels. That's what we do as humans so that we can try and understand it and control it and not be um, in fear of it. And that's what I feel a lot of people why, you know, if you look at certain religions, while they, they don't condone you not following their journey because then you can't be controlled. They don't understand it. And what a lot of people don't understand, they demonize rather than being open and curious to it. Um, mm. So that's what, that's what I see is, and we can all, we all can tap into source energy. We can all tap into these answers from within um, and get quiet and, and trust in it, trust in the felt unseen. You know, when a lot of people are like, oh, coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. Like everything's a synchronicity. There's messages you're always constantly being communicated to. And it's about you tuning in and listening, whether that is you tuning into God, tuning into your, your faith, building your muscle in faith, listening. There might be messages in songs. There might be messages in numbers that come your way, um, in people, you know, and it's about tuning into that and that's why when you're living your life by design you can see the messages you can see um why everything's guiding you but if you're going about it asleep by default you're reactive to your world instead of proactive you miss the magic you like you miss the purpose of why we're here um and and what the universe or god is trying to channel through to you and 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 lead you and all those desires if you have desires too those desires like what's desired by you is destined for you like your desires your dreams planted in your heart for a reason and you're here to actualize them and it's about you just getting rid of the limitations and and letting go of like the opinions of others and that's something that stopped me a lot and I see stop a lot of people is what will people think you know like what if I get cast out but the thing is like I've always been a bit of a lone wolf and a bit of an outcast or and this bit oh. paving my own way. Um, so when I finally just made peace with it and acknowledged it and knowing that my vibe too will attract my tribe and that I can actually be spiritual and, and be myself, then, um, you know, that, that's, that's what's going to bring me that, that joy and that knowing. And this is something too, I've hid how spiritual I am and my psychic gifts for so long. I'd be like a bit of a chameleon in certain places, like, oh, okay, but not reveal that about myself. I can't fully be this because they don't, they're not going to understand it. I'm not going to be able to fit in, but I'm not here to fit in. I'm here to stand out. And this actually even happened too. I've got my business page where I, I show up and, um, and share the wisdom. And then one of the hosts like went to my personal page, which is more of my modeling portfolio. And I had this little, my ego had this little pinch, like this little, Oh my god like i'm about to be seeing i'm coming out of the spiritual closet like hello this is what this is really what i do like my my brother's friends they like what is what is it your sister really does like it seems really eccentric out of this world like what do you think you do and i'm like i know <laughs> it's just my last one big adventure <laughs> Yeah, because I think until people see this or, or other ones that you do, I don't think people see this side of you, right? They see this. Uh, if you go over to uh, Renee's page, you don't you don't see this side of you. And uh, I'm fascinated by that because I 
when I see it, I'm like, yeah, but I know her differently. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. And this has been my next level too. And I didn't recognize that fully how I was still being led by like, like by hide, by hiding, like owning it, but for the right, around the right people. And this is interesting. Like if some people might resonate, it's like, you feel like you can't be all of you around everyone. And like, you can only be all of you around certain people. And I didn't realize that that was something, um, that was playing, playing out. It's like, okay, I'm owning these gifts. I can show up, but it's like only here, not, not there. And so that was like, oh, wow. Like, this is this was my blind spot and this is what I love too and another thing that really helped me step into just owning myself as a coach as a healer as a mentor as a mystic is knowing that I actually don't have to be perfect and I I I don't have to have everything figured out and this is something that I and from my upbringing I thought I had to have everything together I had to be perfect everything had to be polished I couldn't make any mistakes I couldn't get anything wrong um Whereas now it's mistakes and failure is a part of the journey. It's about failing forward. It's about learning. And how do you know you're winning when you haven't, when you haven't lost? And how do you know any better if you don't know the other side? And so uh, this is the beauty is, is uh, instead of looking at these blind spots and shaming them and feeling guilty or, oh, now I can't show up, now I can't show up my gifts because I wasn't aware that I was still in the spiritual closet for a bit. It's like, I've got that awareness and now I have this awareness. I can celebrate it and I'm grateful for it because it's like, wow, this is what's stopping, what's stopping the next level. And I can effectively immediately be like, I'm changing this and I can get to be all myself and own my power. And then zoom, go to that, that next level here today, speaking with you in my, like speaking these certain things about spirituality and also bringing religion into it like that would make me the old version of me would be like never like I never would but because mm. like I'm just owning my voice and owning what I believe in and I'm not going to go and shove this down people's throats it's like do you feel inspired does this call you forward and that's how I feel I lead with purpose because I'm leading as in the embodiment of myself and shining my light and knowing that yes there can be backlash there has been there has been backlash there has been moments you know already where it's like oh wow like people come in and and they and that's why your content you kind of try and play it safe a little bit and then once people come into the container you know it's just like they're like wow like and they can have these deep transformations because they feel safe too but it's yeah this is the whole thing as leaders like we have to go fast and this is my big next step of stepping more into my authentic self and and owning owning what backlash have you felt um received them mm -hmm. um well definitely from people saying like she's part of a cult she's a jezebel spirit um that like not not another one of these like those type of digs and and comments um you know people thinking you're some sort of guru and a lot of even though our ego can feel the the pinch it's like when if you stay connected to your why and your purpose it's inevitable like with for every lover and um a uh, like follower that you get they will equally in a dualistic reality there's an equal parts like there's going to be people that don't resonate with you there's going to be people that don't like you um and you know especially from my army days people have come and they're like some have been like wow look at your journey and how you transform and look what you're doing it's powerful work and then others are like you're so off path it's not good what you're doing and um you know that over the journey that can that can hurt when it, it comes in consistently when I went to speak about my story and certain things that happened in the military a lot of people in the military tried to jump on it and be like no take this down you don't get to share this and it's your fault all of these things um and so mm -hmm. you feel reluctant to share your story and that's actually the big message that came through me this morning and, and last night that I was speaking with my man is that my story is powerful. All of our stories are powerful. Like our journey is so powerful. And I used to dismiss it. I used to, a lot of people don't even know that I've been in the military because of the certain things that happened in my journey there. 
and the shame that I felt, I and the fear of speaking up, I just didn't mention it. And now it's mm. like this, I'm so proud of that part of my life. I'm so proud that I was able to serve my country even for the short amount of time that I did. Um, and that was, you know, I'd wear my uniform in, in honor. And that's a big part of my life that I'm very proud of. And yes, I had dreams and aspirations with that career, but because of certain thing that happened, it led me on another path, uh, which I wouldn't change for the world. Like I feel that gratitude, I feel emotional speaking about it. Um, because I know everything happens for a reason. And, and this is a big part of my, my journey. And I don't want to, I don't want to not own that I was a soldier and I mm. gave my best. We and we will cover that part. We will get into it, and um, and obviously you'll take that for where you want to take it, uh, and where you're comfortable because of what you just mentioned. There, um, there's another terminology that you use that I want you to explain as well. Going back to the other question, um, your spiritual team. What does that mm -hmm. mean? Your spiritual team. So we all have spirit guides, and um, a way that you can, a way that you can tune into this is sitting in stillness and calling them in like calling them in like people in prayer they're like dear god like like they call in they call in god and they ask for guidance and they might get messages in certain ways and this is the same thing that you can do with your spirit team it might be loved ones that have passed it might be other light beings um ancestors uh spirit animals angels like a lot of people so i could do this you could do this everyone can do this Every how would i know if someone's coming through to me so this is where when you imagination like your imagination is and i love the willy wonka song pure imagination your imagination is real like it it's real and a lot of people think oh i've just got this wild imagination but it's like wait a minute think about it like you're seeing you're seeing these things these these are real and so usually when messages come through our imagination comes in and if we see things a lot of people like especially if you do like a past life re regression or like a hypnosis or timeline therapy. And it's like, you know, where did this come from? Was it passed down, passed down geno genology? Oh my God. Genology. Oh my God. I can't even say the word. Genology. <laughs> I can't even. I mean, genology? Yeah. G was it part? Is that right? Yeah. Was it part? I'll just, I, that's why I just say lineage now. I'm just like, oh. Okay. <laughs> I can't. I'm like lineage. Was it passed down through lineage? Was it past life that happened in the womb? Is it something in this lifetime? At what age? Um, and then ages come in or, or answers come in straight away and it's like you start trusting it. So if you're sitting in and you even said it um, when you had your dream where you went and you were in a mountain or in a cave and then you met your grandma, I think you yeah. said. Yeah. Like that's actually a powerful like activation that you can do is sit in stillness and imagine yourself going up a mountain, going into a cave, sitting there, light the fire, get comfortable and call them in. And you might see, you might see beings. And the thing is, what happens is our frequency as humans can't fully connect to their frequency because their frequency is so high. So we, we interpret them in a way that we can comprehend. So you might be able to interpret it through your, gra your grandma coming in, or you might, if there's another different being coming in or, um, like a, a, someone that's passed, that's like a celebrity, for example, and they come in and they're one of your spirit guides, you might see them as a celebrity um, or you might see them in like a, a figure, like they might be an animal, they might be like a half man, half goat, like your brain will try and conceptualize it and then your logical mind or your ego will be like, come on, this is just my own like imagination, like but, but trust that this has come for a reason and it's right and that was a big thing for me is I never trusted the stuff that would come in, like with with you, I probably never would have said like the names, Jean and Pam. I never would have like said it because I was like, oh, like really? So for me, it's just every day being like, no, trust, 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 trust. Yeah. trust. Uh, yeah, sorry. No, have you finished that bit? Sorry. Yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, you just got to trust in like once you see it, whatever comes through, this is part of your, your spirit team and just trusting what comes in. I think we should, uh, I, and when I tell the story of Jean and Pam of, uh, of our Saturday pre-chat, I do tell people that you don't trust, you, you didn't trust those thoughts. And I think that's the powerful part, isn't it? Because you weren't going to expose it to me until, because you saw my reaction. I was like, hmm, 
J and P. No, no, no. And then you went Gene and Pam, and I just lost it. Yeah, <laughs> because they're not at the forefront of my brain. Then that's my mum's journey. That doesn't it? You know, I share my mum's grief in that, but it's not my journey. I, I I know Gene and Pam, and I saw them when I went home from Australia. Um, but I they 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 weren't my friends. They're just my mum's friends, right? You know, so they weren't at the forefront of my brain. But to put that into context about the cave, anyone who's wondering, I have, because I think people should know this, but lead, which leads on to next week to cover any any questions that might be asked. Um, all I've told Renee is I shared a dream when I was 22. My grand died when I was 16 during my big exams in the UK, at high school, leaving high school. And um, I always said to her, you know, please come and see me. I, I want to see you, but please don't scare me. <laughs> and um, I told Renee this story. And I, at 22, I remember it being about, I don't remember the age. I just remember it being six years, which makes sense. It's 22. So I was 22 years old and I had a dream one night and I woke up back in my bed like normal but I did have a dream that my grand had come to see me but the dream was actually in a cave and we just sat uh, on a, some rocks in there and I remember a bit of water in the middle of us um, it's not as clear as it used to be but I, what I do remember is that we had a conversation and that um, she asked me how she asked how my mum was and and I said that and and I, the rest of the conversation is pretty cloudy but I do remember waking up going shit yep. I was there that was real that felt or at least it felt real and I told you that story and just to um, reiterate that's all I've said about my gran mm -hmm. um, to Renee mm -hmm. um, so if if and I'm saying that just in case it comes up in it, it might not come up gran might not come through um, I am sending the vibes out there that I do want it to yeah uh, but obviously for verification that might not happen is that is that right yeah. or is there a good chance that she might come it's, through you, we'll, we'll see so for me when my psychic gifts came in i'd see visions yet i hadn't fully channeled spirits yet so you were my first experience of channeling spirit wow like, well you nailed that's it why Jesus. I, that's why i was like oh. oh my god like it was so clear and i'm like well it has to be like because i'm i'm fully learning to trust it and it came in um so, and then when I start, when you ask, like, if there's a message and uh, straight away, I started hearing this voice and then I started crying. I was like, oh, I'm not ready. Like, I'm oh, God, I just wish we recorded it. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. It was just I'm insane. Fully ready. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. We'll set the intention yeah. and, and I'll yeah. activate, I'll go through my normal activation and, and really connect into the present because that didn't even go through a full activation. Um, I'm, oh my God. I'm so scared. I'm so nervous. Oh my God. Um, if you visualizing, if you're visualizing that day and going deeper here, but so we've got a bit of a taster if, and it's a world exclusive. If we're doing spirits, by the way, I'm leading our own way with Renee. <laughs> um, <laughs> if there was a visualization of the 16th of October, that night that we're going to meet at, um, I've got it here. Uh, we're meeting at eight thirty PM on the sixteenth. If if you've got a visualization now, what in a couple of words, what are you visualizing of that night? Mm. So I'm feeling I'm feeling like there's gonna be a lot of messages coming through. And so for me, I um I'm really gonna like set the space for it. So especially if I'm because I'm going to be open to see what comes through in terms of mediumship um, and I'm going to set the space. Like a big thing with healing and, and, and um, calling this in is knowing how to cleanse your energy, protect your energy, um, set the intention, set the space, um, do your prayers, your confirmation and, and thanking the universe and spirit team. So that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a real, uh, yeah, seeing a lot of, a lot of that. Oh, I light my candle. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Um, <laughs> what? Uh, I don't know if I'm going over the line. I've never done this before. I don't know, so part part of my ignorance. But do you see? Do you see my gran? Do you see her coming through? Do you feel it, or is it just not there yet? Not there yet. Okay. Oh god! We'll All right. We'll see. We'll set the intention for it. So. I'll sure, connect into sure. your star chakra because we have um we have all of our chakras and we have chakras up all these chakras up here as well. Um mm. and so we'll set the intention and we'll call her in. We'll okay. actually set the intention right. to call her in. Yeah, oh, wow. I'm getting goosebumps. Okay. Me too, me too. All right, back to you, back to you, back to you. Um okay, so where you've uh, you've answered the questions I think I, I had in my mind, but 
let's go back then. So where did this all come from? What, where did it begin for you yep. um, early on in your life? Okay, so my, if I think of my childhood and my upbringing, it's very, um, what you use the word confuse, you use the word confusing for a moment because such like, I had such a great childhood and a lot of shit that happened at the same time. I had a childhood where I was able to really become so close with my immediate family and we grew through certain things together and um, it was, yeah, it was, um, I grew up in, in Newcastle, which is two hours north of, of Sydney, uh, which is where I am now. And I, um, yeah, like I had psychic abilities from the start. I used to communicate to fairies, I used to have imaginary friends. Um, I used to know when someone was sick, um, when someone was coming, what they were wearing. It even happened again like last week we're estranged to our extended family like because of certain things that happen in childhood um and my cousin like we haven't made any contact with our cousin and on Sunday I had a dream that she called and she wanted to communicate with us and then just the other day she called the family like I told my family like oh, I had a dream Sarah called I think she's gonna reach out oh, cousin my. um and she did she did so I used to get that when I was younger as well. Um, I had an experience too where I was in my grandmother's home and all the doors like were closed. There was no windows, nothing like that. And I opened a door and this draft of like like gust of cold wind like went through me and like I was in, in shock and it blew out all of the lights and stuff and there was no... There was no doors open. There was no window. There was no way like that could have happened. Um, and I used to sometimes like see things in the corner of my eyes and it would scare me. I used to, my parents almost every night were running into like my room because I was screaming because of either a dreams I would have or I was afraid. Um, I suffer with migraines my whole life as a child. My migraines were so, so bad. Um, I'd get them all the time, like monthly, and then they really came back strong in the last, like, couple of years, um, weekly, because I was so, still so ignorant to my abilities. And I, um, my brother struggled a lot with depression. Like, I, um, it's because he was, he was gay and we, it was we're still in an environment where it was very homophobic and that wasn't okay um and so I witnessed my brother getting bullied like at school and I used to go and like want to stand up for him um but it would only make it it would only make it worse for him so then I felt like I couldn't help like I felt helpless or, or powerless and um and yeah like one time like almost wit witness him like wanting to take that next step, like not wanting to be here and, and as a really young girl trying to console him and, 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 um, yeah. Like, be, be here in, in, in terms of ending his life. Mm, mm. How did you know he was going to do that? Did he share it? Did he yeah. attempt it? Yeah. Yeah. So I walked in one time and like, he was trying, like, yeah, he was not in a, in a good place. And, um, I was there there for him and and he he's so happy now like so happy now in his life he's my older brother I love love him with all my heart um he's so happy with his man now he's engaged they have a beautiful home they've got a beautiful dog Macy um he's happy in his career he loves his games like we used to be a big he used to be well he still is a big gamer and I was a big gamer as well I loved video games and um yeah. I yeah, like World of Warcraft, loved World of Warcraft because of all the different worlds and the magic and the power. And I was just like, this is all true. I believe in this, the elves and um, and all of that. And so he used to get lost in his games and I used to love playing video games and like Lara Croft, I really resonated with Lara Croft. Like she was my role model, like Tomb Raider. Um, you can see that in your social media, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so 
definitely see that. Yeah. <laughs> so Lara Croft was a big thing for me. Like she's a she's a badass woman. She's powerful. She's a truth seeker. Um, she's uh, always off on adventures, traveling the world. She's here for a big purpose. Uh, you know, in a lot of her missions, it's all about saving the world and and that was a big catalyst of why I went into the defense force, like with the the weapons and serving the world and serving something greater. And she was a big role, like the biggest role model for me. And um, I'd love to play her like as an actress, like go and do that role. That would be amazing. I'd love that. I can do a British accent. I can, see I can that. do a British accent. I think I can do a really good British accent. Go on then. Okay. I'm British. I'll be the judge of All that. All right. So I've got my coconut water here, so I'm going to have a sip now because I'm a little bit thirsty. So I feel like I could be Lara Croft. <laughs> not bad, not bad. When Aussies do British accents, I'll try to do an English one. They always come out Scottish. I'm like, dude, that's Scottish. Scottish. It's not English. Yes. No. I can't do Scottish accents. Mm. I'm a man. Very... I'm, I'm, I'm a... <laughs> Sorry, very go on. Um, but, yeah, and I used to um, – was a big – like performer, like always dancing, dress ups, role playing in my own world. And you know what's really interesting? I used to play this reoccurring game, and it's crazy. Like I thought about it the other day after our conversation. I'm like, wow, like everything just makes sense with my journey. But I used to like used to have this little Bible, like this little red Bible. It was very small and thick, and I used to play this game where I um was being like chased or hunted down and I was like trying to decode the Bible and find the wisdoms and and like the messages like the deeper meanings behind it and um <laughs> it's basically what I do like it's what I do now yeah. is the deeper mean not decoding the Bible but like finding the deeper wisdoms in texts and scripture and um like yeah I would I'd play that game a lot and and always thinking that I was saving the world. Like, I mean, it's like, how old were you there? God, I would have been like six. six. So at, at six, where does that mindset come from now? Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.